everyone, welcome uh, to our live stream in the Monastery of Flavor here at St. Anthony Industries. My name is Josiah. Uh, also in the studio we have September. Say hi, September. Hi, September. We also have Aaron and Andy in the studio, and today we're talking about our Breville tools. So uh, in the last couple years, there's been a lot more home baristas around the country and around the world who have been purchasing machines like the Breville. So we decided as a company to focus on tools regarding the Breville machine that uh, work with the Breville machine and upgrade uh, your, uh, what you work with at home making espresso. And uh, we have a lot of tools that go with the Breville machine um, before we do that. So we're going to go through a process. Uh, we're going to make some lattes. Uh, we have uh, Guatemala in here from Logos Co uh, Coffee Company that we're going to be uh, dialing in, pulling shots with, using these tools, uh, dialing in the uh, new levy and uh, BT wedge tamp. Um, in order to pull a great shot and then we're going to steam some milk and hopefully make some beautiful lattes in the process. So before we get started, uh, let's outline some of the tools that we make for the Breville machine. Um, with the Breville kits, we, we stick with walnut tools, uh, walnut being uh, like this block here, um, or you can get a, uh, a layered, uh, but this doesn't come with the uh, Breville kits themselves. Kits themselves are just walnut. But if you want to buy the, the tools individually, we also make them in maple for the hopper lid. Also walnut here, as you can see. And then we also have the Model B tamp, uh, which comes in both maple and walnut like this. So these stamps are really unique. Uh, they're designed specifically for the Breville machines. They come with the magnetic insert in the top so that they fit right inside your machine. I don't know if you can see it in this view right here. Can we see that? Yeah, they fit right in your machine like that, magnetically speaking. And uh, they have also the uh, removable base. So let's go back to the top view. We have the removable base with these. So if your kid drops it or, or you drop it and you blame it on your kid, uh, then you can get a new <laughs> you can get a new base for your Model B tamp for like $15. We'll send you a new one. So that's a, it's a very unique tool. Also for the uh, Breville machine, we have the Herald Portafilter, which is a bottomless uh, portafilter designed specifically for the Breville machine, uh, machined for uh, the group head of the Breville machine so that you can see your shot as it pulls. Um, the one thing about the uh, stock portafilters that come with the Breville machines is they are the dual spout. And if you're trying to dial an espresso, it can be difficult if you can't see how your shot's pulling out of the bottom. So we made a naked portafilter for you so that if your shot's pulling weird, you'll be able to see it and you can correct it in the prep process using the, uh, the, the block party or whatever you're using at home to dial in your espresso. So the Herald's key in order to make good espresso. Also, uh, for the Breville, we have our 53 millimeter tools, like the new Levy Tamp here, which is designed to fit the uh, Breville portafilter like this. It's a tamp, and then we have our BT Wedge distribution tool, which also fits for the Breville tools. All right, any questions so far? Live questions. September's going to be relaying any per pertinent questions that we're, are relating to the Breville machine as we're dialing in. If you have any questions, just speak up and we'll do our best to answer those real time. Feeling good? We're feeling good. We're feeling good, all right. Let's get into it. Uh, we're gonna start off by pulling a shot of espresso. Um, I wanna demonstrate, hopefully, what it looks like. Um, if you have a lighter roasted coffee in here, I know a lot of people have that you prefer lighter, lighter roasted coffees and you like lighter roasts with espresso. However, with the Breville machine, it can be difficult. So I'm gonna give you one specific tip regarding uh, making light roasted espresso on a Breville machine. The reason light roasted espresso is difficult on the Breville is because when a coffee is lighter roasted, it's more dense, it's more heavy. And when it's not as roasted, it doesn't expand as much in your basket. And so therefore, you're gonna get a lot more puck fracturing uh, and get a lot more channeling in your shot. And so you'll be able to tell if you're getting uh, puck fracturing and uh, spraying in your shot, if, uh, or <laughs> channeling in your shot, if you see spraying coming out of your portafilter basket, which is awesome to see 
because then you can correct it and then you can have legit good tasting espresso. So we're gonna roll with a really light roasted coffee in here today and hopefully I'll give you a tip on how to make it work for the Breville machine. So first thing I do is I weigh out my Herald Porter filter right here. If you have a scale at home, you can do this. So tear it out, zero grams. I'm gonna dose 18 grams in just to get started. You can tell this is a lighter roasted coffee because the grinder had a little bit of trouble even grinding that. So, all right, see where we're at. I'm going for 18. Need a, a little bit more right here. Nineteen point eight. That was a lot more. Okay. Reduce some of my grounds. Don't put too much pressure on your grounds when you're removing them. Whatever this is at, I'm gonna go with this. Eighteen point three. All right, so first I'm gonna distribute with my uh, BT wedge distribution tool, like this. Get an even surface before I tamp. So BT stands for before you tamp. Uh, and the tamping should be nice and easy. Shouldn't be hard. You should be able to tamp with one finger. If you have to, to uh, you put too much pressure on, then you're probably tamping too hard. Too much puck density is not what you're looking for. First, I'm gonna cleanse my, my machine here, get some, so in case there's any grounds in the bottom there, I don't want those in my shot. Um, and then I'm gonna pull a shot into this cup here. All right, and for this shot, again, I'm gonna ho uh, hopefully, maybe it'll turn out, you never know, but if we see some spraying, uh, hopefully I'll just change one variable and then that will help you at home know what to do in case you're seeing spraying as well. But if we're not seeing spraying, we'll just go with that. But like I said, light roasted coffees can be difficult. So you're getting some spraying right over here. <laughs> and a lot of swirling. So that was a 25 second shot and I assume we're a bit over on our yield. So we're gonna make a quick change here. I'm just gonna dump this out. Go again. All right, it seemed like I could use a, a little bit more density in my shot. And then what I'm gonna do with the Breville machine, uh, and this is really helpful, if you if you like light roasted coffees, I'm gonna do a full pre-infusion shot. Um, and it's not necessarily the best way to go about uh, extracting coffee, except when it's a really light roasted coffee. And so um, you'll see the difference here. What happens in a pre-infusion shot is you just hold the button down and then it creates less pressure in your basket and allows it a little bit easier uh, expansion and saturation for your puck. Uh, and it doesn't force its way through and fracture your puck on the way out. So we're gonna do that. I might also increase my density on my new left tool a little bit. And then hopefully we'll get a nice looking shot here. All right, again, I'm gonna tear out my uh, portafilter handle. Nine. This is really heavy coffee. The denser the coffee, the heavier it is normally. So 18 grams in, just like that. I'm gonna distribute using my BT wedge distribution tool. And then tamp using my new Livy. Again, I, uh, I dialed it out a few notches. So we'll get a bit more puck density on this one. And then again, what I'm gonna do is this is normally a last resort for me. Uh, if I can't get my shot to pull straight up the way the, way the Breville is designed, 
I will do a pre, pre infusion shot on it when it's a lighter roasted coffee that is just too dense, doesn't expand in my basket. So here we go. I'm gonna hold this button here on the top. It's the one that's just right up here. That's the double shot button. I'm gonna time it as I do it. And hopefully this will fix the channeling problem. And I'm hoping for a 30 second shot at a one to two ratio. Looks like it might be a little bit fast, but that's okay. We'll stop it right there. 28 seconds. See where we're at. 47 out, above a one to two ratio. Um, so we could do it again. And uh, what I would do at this point is uh, make my grind a little bit finer. But it really what it matters is what it tastes like, so. It's pretty good. It's, uh, it's a little bit lighter, a little bit brighter. Um, I could use a little bit more body in it uh, and sweetness. So I'm gonna change it up a little bit once again. Pull one more shot. And then uh, we'll make some beautiful lattes using the Breville machine, which you can do at home. Okay, one more shot uh, with the Breville. And I think we're gonna nail it this time. Third shot's the charm, right? <clears throat> All I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna increase my dose. Uh, I don't wanna change my grind right now. Um, if you were going to uh, dial it in at home, I, I might recommend you just decrease uh, the size of your grind, make it a little bit finer. In this case, uh, what I'm going to do is increase my uh, dose, which will also increase my puck density because I'm not gonna change my tool at all. So we'll get a little bit more grounds in there in our basket and shoot for that one to two ratio in about 30 seconds. So I'm going to go about 18.5 or 19, see how that looks. and that's looking pretty good uh, to me. So let's go with that. I need to change one variable at a time. Obviously, in this case, since I changed my dose, uh, my puck density is gonna be a little bit more dense. We'll see if it's too dense. Might be a little bit too dense. I wasn't able to reach my mid ring with uh, the rim of my basket there. Let's see how this turns out anyways. In that case, what I would do is I would dial in my new levy tamp so that it does reach the mid ring. And I do that by loosening the top here. If we get the top view, um, loosening the top here, and then I can dial in the base just a little bit. So, and then I tighten this back up and it shouldn't move unless you forcefully move it. But uh, yeah, that's, that's how that works. And then and then I could tamp and, and reach the mid ring of my basket that way. Okay, so let's pull another shot. Gonna have 19 grams in. I'm shooting for about 38 grams out in 30 seconds. And what I'm going to do, we didn't have any spraying last time, which was what we were shooting for. We just had the wrong ratio, so. Third shot is the charm. Here we go. So I'm gonna pull the shot. I'm gonna time my shot again. I'm just holding this double shot button all the way through the end. And that's looking pretty good right there. Hoon says hello. Who does? Hoon. Hoon says hello. Hello, Hoon. Thanks for joining our stream. Look, uh, we got a one to two ratio this time. 19 grams in, 39 grams out. 
So let's go ahead and uh, make this into a latte. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start my uh, pump for my uh, steam wand here and get my milk ready while that's happening. Some people say that they steam their milk before they pull their shot, which could be a way to do it. Um, I prefer to steam the milk last because I feel like espresso can sit a little bit longer than milk is able to sit. So this is how I prefer to do it. I'm gonna move this porta filter out of the way. All right, we'll get steaming on this. I shut this off once it's warmed up and then turn it back on once it's good to go. What I'll do is I'll set this in the spout of my pitcher and try to get this whirlpool running on the edge. As I get enough uh, air in my milk, I'll dive my wand in order to divide, divide, divide those bubbles in order to create a really silky microfoam. So we'll see if we can achieve that. I've never used this milk before. We are always trying out new milks and it's a lot of fun. September is uh, determined to find the best milk out there. I am. Um, I, I told her the best milk out there is. It's the Costco milk. The Costco milk. It's the Costco. We're yeah. trying to find something that can beat it. Yeah. We're trying to find something that can like. If anybody has recommendations, let us know. We'll, we'll try it out. Yeah. All right, my milk is almost to temperature here. And then uh, we'll pour a latte. I think Andy will probably drink a latte or Aaron. Yes. They're big latte drinkers. All right, so I uh, don't have tons of creme on this, so it would probably be not super uh, contrasting artwork, but here we go. Ooh, a little shaky. Right, and if you point the picture towards yourself, your artwork will be facing the right direction. A lot of latte cups don't have handles. Ours will, so. There we go, a little Rosetta. It's not perfect, but hey, for at home, this is awesome. On a Breville machine, drink that every morning and live a happy life, right? My wife likes when I make her uh, lattes home. All right. So again, uh, you can make beautiful lattes at home using uh, the Breville machine and using our Breville tools. Um, there are two different kits uh, with the Breville tools. There is the standard kit, which comes with the hopper lid, but in walnut. So I should demonstrate that. It is the walnut hopper lid, also the walnut uh, model B tamp and the uh, Harold Porta filter. So these three things come in the standard Breville kit at a reduced price if you purchase them together. Um, obviously, you can purchase all these tools individually as well. Um, but in the deluxe kit comes the the block uh, walnut block with walnut tools uh, tops. Also has the uh, the walnut uh, hopper lid and the Harold Porta filter. So here is the deluxe kit, and uh, a lot of people purchase it all at once. They know they're going to get all the tools eventually, so might as well go all at once at a reduced price and uh, start having fun at home making espresso and beautiful lattes for those whom you love and for yourself every morning, taking the time to uh, to make good coffee. So any uh, final re remarks, questions from the chat that we can answer? No, but um, can I get the upgrade kits in different wood patterns or just the walnut? So the, uh, the kits only come in walnut. Um, however, if you, uh, uh, yeah, they just come in walnut. If you wanna purchase tools individually, you can, you can get them in different colors. Um, if you uh, 
put in the notes uh, that you want different colors uh, in your kit, um, we might be able to uh, help with that. But that's up to customer service. I'm not customer service. <laughs> So, but a standard standard is that the uh, kits only come in walnut uh, because they're matching. We don't have at this point, which might change, but we don't have at this point a uh, Herald Porta filter that is in maple. So we're not able to uh, make uh, kits that match in all maple, if that makes sense. So that's why the kits all, all come in walnut. But walnut looks awesome. It does. Does. We love the walnut. Yes. Uh, cool. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Thanks for taking the time with us in the Monastery Flavor. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.